your liver has cells in them for physiology called Kupfer cells. Kupfer cells eat unwanted, unfriendly bacteria, viruses, and cancer cells. So if your liver is not functioning, you're going to have a greater potential to have cancer. Now I'm going to throw out two thoughts to you right now. Are you ready for this? There are two of the most important items I'm going to share with you right now to prevent cancer. There's a term called apoptosis. Mm -hmm. A-P-O-P-T-O-S-I-S. We have been led to believe that gene genes, or lack of gene function, is the main reason we have all the diseases. Well, I know and you know, RNA and DNA, that's how we work. So if you go to the American Cancer Society website, they'll say the leading cause of cancer is altered DNA. So there are two elements that are just so critically important. The very first one is iodine. Iodine is not just for the thyroid gland. Iodine is for breast tissue, ovaries, and testicles in men. Iodine literally will turn the gene that's been on off that promotes cancer. Apoptosis is limited cell life. Mm -hmm. Iodine keeps cancer cells in check. That's important. Mm -hmm. I have spent time in Japan. The average Japanese woman consumes about 12 milligrams of iodine a day from sea vegetables and from fish. It's not about the soy. It's about sea vegetables and fish. Japanese women are not very big, by the way. So they consume 12 milligrams of iodine a day. I consume 12 milligrams of iodine a day. Now, just because we're telling people to take iodine now doesn't mean you go out to the health food store and buy iodine because you have to be really logical and wise about mm -hmm. this. We do a TSH, a T3, a T4. That's a blood test for the thyroid. If your T4 is less than the midline, we may supplement with iodine. But there's other things that we'd like to do first. You could also do a urine iodine loading test. In other words, we have people take no vitamins at all for four days. We do a pretest. We have them urinate in a cup or a container. Then we have them take 50 milligrams of iodine. And for the next 24 hours, they literally catch that iodine. We want to see how much is excreted, the iodine, in the urine. You should excrete 95% of it. Most people I see, they excrete about, they have about 62%. They've excreted about 35. That means that their body's holding on to the iodine. That is the most scientific way to assess someone for iodine. We supplement accordingly. Now, if you take iodine too much, too fast, and you have bromine, fluorine, and chlorine in your body, you can see, Dr. Bob, this is getting big. This is very intense. This is, you have to repeat this one. Bromine comes from hot tubs. Chlorine comes from toothpaste, water. Chlorine comes from water. That's one of the reasons that we promote chlor shower dechlorinators. You know, most every day people in the United States, they stand in a four by five gas, I mean glass chamber, breathing in toxic chlorine gases. Chlorine compromises thyroid function. So if you don't have enough iodine, you're going to have a greater potential not to have the gene working that stops yeah. cancer cells. The second is vitamin D. Vitamin D and iodine work hand in hand to keep cancer in check in the human body. So what has science been telling us to do for the last 30 years? Stay out of the, the sun. sun. Mm -hmm. you, the sun is your friend. Now I mentioned something in the past that oil has everything to do with moving the calcium from the blood to the skin. If you use appropriate flax oil, organic flax oil, and oils in your body, you're going to get calcium to the skin. The sun won't bother your body. Okay, so that's, hmm. that's really important. So vitamin D comes from the sunshine hitting the cholesterol, hello, on your skin, that's in your skin, and converting it to vitamin D. So we have the greatest statin drug in the world that's up in the sky. It's called the sun. Converts cholesterol on your skin to vitamin D. Then vitamin D absorbs calcium from the intestines, puts it in the blood. Well, vitamin D also assists iodine in keeping that gene, especially in breast tissue, which we're talking about, in check. So I have found from my experience that most people who are unhealthy have a vitamin D level that's lower than 20. We supplement accordingly, usually two to 4,000 international units a day. I use a vitamin D that I put on my tongue, two drops. It's easily absorbed into the body. You want to be tested for vitamin D3. If you are dark skin, you want to make sure you really get it assessed. If you're, 
If you even work in the sunny part of the United States and you are never exposed to the sun, you need to be in the sun. Putting suntan lotion on your lips does not cause or prevent cold sores. So you can start looking at this whole package of preventing breast cancer, iodine, vitamin D, make sure your liver is functioning. See, if your liver is not functioning and you're not having a bowel movement, your body is in a state of toxicity. Mm -hmm. What I have also learned is that when a woman has her gallbladder out, that's very serious, by the way. Half a million gallbladders are taken out of, you, out of women every year in the United States, or not just women, people in the United States. See, your liver makes bile. Bile is your soap. Mm -hmm. Bile is your dish detergent. It's your emulsifier. So bile is stored in a little container called the gallbladder. Your gallbladder is your bottle of dish detergent. When a woman usually has their second child, now this is, I've been practicing since 78, and this is amazing how you just learn this. See, when I first started in practice, nobody had their gallbladders out. And then when they had their gallbladders out, they stitched them. Well, about 12 years ago, they started putting titanium clips in people. So people come in my office, it's going to really flip you here, this is science now. I notice that the vertebrae in their low back are always shifting to the left side, right opposite the titanium clips. I'll say that again, hmm. because I have a degree in spinal engineering. So I look. So all the vertebra right across the titanium clips are 90% of the time shifting off to the left. Well, I also know that the nerves from the neck affect the diaphragm. If the diaphragm is not contracting properly, it affects that muscle that turns the body. So it's possible, it came first, the chicken or the egg, you could have misalignment to your neck that affects the diaphragm, that affects these nerves, that twist the vertebra, that affect the gallbladder. But if you had two children, say, Dr. Bob, what about two children? Baby number two puts extra stress on the liver, which compromises gallbladder function. The gallbladder is a reservoir for bile. Bile is alkaline. Right now, most people in the world are stressed. Stress causes acid. Mm -hmm. Bile is alkaline. People underneath stress have thick, pasty bile. When you have thick, pasty bile, your gallbladder is not going to function. Body signals for gallbladder dysfunction, metal taste in your mouth. Digestive distress with radishes. In my Doctor of Natural Health Studies, I took a class on herbology. Radishes are bitter herbs. Bitter herbs promote digestion. Radishes are not bad food. So if you eat a, a radish and it causes digestive distress, it's not the radish. It's your liver. But it's not your liver, it's your gallbladder. You're probably not eating enough fresh fruits and vegetables anyways, and your body is acid. People who have thick, pasty bile and are acid, and if they're a female, tend to have higher estrogen. When they have higher estrogen, they're gonna have tender breasts, heavy menstrual flow. It's part of this whole sequence of what's going on inside mm -hmm. of their body. They usually have a tendency to have a little bronzing here on their left mm -hmm. cheek. A couple other thoughts with the liver. Body signals for a liver, <clears throat> varicose veins, spider veins, hemorrhoids, and cherry hemangiomas. Those are the little red bumps that we'll see on a person's body. Mm -hmm. If a gentleman has cherry hemangiomas, it's not a good body signal. That means he has too much estrogen. We live a, in a world of too much estrogen. Inside of this can, there's a, a substance called BPA. I talk about this in my detoxification book. BPA is a resin, has estrogen in it. When they put food in the can, they heat the can, the estrogen from the lining goes into the food. So you don't want to be eating canned food. You want to minimize, and you're seeing more and more places that they have cartons. They don't have mm -hmm. canned food like they used to. So we're exposed to estrogen everywhere, watery drink, food we eat, that's why you want to do organic. So this whole concept of cancer, this is not just about, and I'm going to tell you what really hurts me, is the new term is previvor. When a woman has been told that their family has the Brock mm -hmm. 1 and 2, and then they take their breast off. My mother-in-law had her breast taken off in 1968. My wife was in the eighth grade. Now imagine back then. My wife and I are closer to 60 than we are 50. And I want you to know something. We watch everything that we eat and everything that we do, and my wife has normal breast tissue because she keeps her liver functioning optimally. So you keep your liver functioning optimally. Your ABC is a half a red apple every day, third cup of beets, four or five baby carrots, drink water, minimize and eliminate trans fat. And you know what? Medications compromise liver function too. So ladies, 
If you have tender breast, heavy menstrual flow, we have to get that liver functioning optimally. One last thought about female hormonal health. It's heavy menses and having an ablation done. I'm not sure if you've heard that term mm -hmm. before. Ablation is quite frightening. Ablation is when they literally go in and they cauterize the inside of a woman's uterus. Now this is ludicrous because the cause of the problem is too much estrogen. If you have too much estrogen, you're going to have a heavy menstrual flow. The last thing you want in the world you want to have done is you want that uterus cauterized. Because I've had patients come into my office that the blood started flowing into their pelvis. Mm -hmm.